In this online lecture, we're going to talk about what sometimes is referred to as tri-substitution. And what we're basically trying to accomplish here is if our benzene ring has two substituents already on it, where would a third one add? Now, you might be thinking after all that we went through just to figure out how a second substituent could be added, that this is very complicated. But you're going to see here it's not complicated at all. It's actually very easy and it relies on basically all the principles that we learned before concerning substituent effects on benzene. And what we're learning here for our orgo exam is just the necessary steps that you go through to get to certain answers. So for instance, let's look at an example right here. Let's say I take this molecule and I'm reacting Br2FeBr3. Now remember, we learned in a previous online lecture that Br2 in FeBr3 likes to add Br to a benzene ring. But look, our benzene ring has already two substituents on it. And let's look at this case by case. Let's call this example or case one. In case one here, notice our two substituents right here have different directing abilities. And remember we learned in the previous online lecture that we're just going to memorize this. Like for instance, we should know that methyls are really R groups and they're in the first category in the sense that they are orthopara directors. And remember, their full title is orthopair directing activators, but right now we only care about the orthopara part. Which means basically this, if the methyl group were the only substituent on the benzene ring, he would like to add an electrophile ortho to him, such as these two positions right here, or para to him. But para is taken up by the other substituent. So if the methyl had his way, where you see the green arrows is where he would want to put the additional electrophile. Now let's look at the bottom substituent here. Remember you're going to have memorized that he happens to be a meta directing deactivator. So he'd like to add the electrophile meta to him. Well what position is meta to him? Well it happens to be the exact same position. So in this case it should be a no-brainer. Both substituents want the newly added electrophile in the exact same location. So to get to product, we're just going to simply add it right there. And I could add it to the left ortho position or the right. It doesn't matter. It ends up being the same molecule anyway. So sometimes you might find yourself in this situation where simply both substituents agree upon a location of the newly added electrophile. But let's look at other cases we might find ourselves in. Let's call this case or example two. Again, we're doing the same reaction here. But we have this as an original substituent, OH, and a methyl as a substituent. Again, what we do is isolate each substituent and see where he would like to add the electrophile. Well, remember, OH is orthopara directing, which means he would like to add the electrophile in his ortho positions or para to him. And in this case, again, para is taken up. Now, the methyl below, he's also a orthopara director. So if he had his way, he'd like to add ortho to him, and again, his para is taken up. So in this case, we don't have an agreement. There's almost, you can say, like a tug of war between where these substituents would like to place the added electrophile. To resolve this, you simply go back to your chart that I gave you here, and remember, within the same group, some substituents are more activating than others. And I'm just going to remind you of this right here. Remember, OH on your list here is more activating than the R group is. What this means, going back to our example, is that the more activating substituent wins the quote-unquote tug of war here. So that means OH is going to get his way, which means the BR is going to be added ortho to the OH. And again, on either side, doesn't matter, you're ending up with the same product. So that's how you would handle that situation. Let's look at another case where you might find yourself in. Let's say you're trying to predict the product here and let's pay attention to our substituents. Notice we have an NH2 substituent and a methyl substituent. And let's get to know them here. The NH2 substituent is definitely an ortho pair director, which means he'd like to add the electrophile ortho to him and para to him. Working our way to the methyl, the methyl is also an ortho para director. 
so he would like to add the substituent ortho to him and para to him. So notice it's kind of like case one where we have an agreement between the substituents. But here's what we're learning in this case. This product right here, notice the BR would like to add there, but I need you to know that we wouldn't get that product or we would simply get very little of it. Meaning this basically, the electrophile won't add to the position that's between the two substituents here and here. And this is simply due to steric strain. That position where the BR is is simply just too crowded. And since looking at our structure to the left here, that's not the only location where the BR can add, the other two positions have simply less steric strain, which means the BR can add to those other two. Meaning this, even though we won't get this as a product, we'll end up just getting this as one of our products right here where the BR is ending up para to the NH2 group, and we'll also add the BR to the other possible position here, where the BR is ortho to the NH2 and para to the CH3. So simply put, you can't add a third substituent between two substituents that are originally meta to each other, and is sometimes referred to as the meta rule. Let's look at another case here. What would we do in this situation? Let's look at our substituents here. The top one is a methyl. We already know that he's an ortho para director, so he'd like to add an electrophile here. The ethyl group below is also an ortho para director, so he would like to add the electrophile here. So again, this seems like some kind of tug of war case. But think about it, both of these substituents are the R group within the first category of substituents. They're both ortho para directing activators, and since they're the same, they're equally activating. So here's all you do in this case is you simply get a mixture of products. You would get one product where the BR is ortho to the methyl, and you would get another product here where the BR happens to be ortho to the ethyl. Now, what I want you to know obviously here is that it is possible to get roughly the same amount of two of these products here. But if you think about it, the more bulky a substituent gets, the more product you're going to get where the electrophile adds as far away from the bulky group as possible. So for this particular problem, we might observe in a slightly higher percentage the product where the BR is ortho to the methyl because the ethyl group simply is more bulky but we're talking only slightly higher percentage. Now, let's look at a sample problem here and turn it up a notch and make it a little bit harder than what we've been doing before. Let's say you're on your orgo tests and you have to predict the product of this reaction. Notice it has two benzene rings and we're adding Br2 and FeBr3. So we have to figure out first on which benzene ring is the Br going to add and then where on that benzene ring will the BR add? Well, let's do the analysis here. Let's look at this left ring right here and look at the substituents on him, and we'll do the same analysis for the right ring as well. So let's start with our left ring right here. Notice he has this substituent right here. And remember, when we're evaluating these substituents, we only care about the group that is directly connected to the ring. And it is this group right here that's directly connected. And if you remember correctly, a carbonyl group like this is a meta-directing deactivator. But right now, all we care about is the fact that he's deactivating or, again, makes benzene less reactive. Let's now look at the other substituent over here. He's a methyl group or an R group. Remember, he's an ortho directing activator, but all we care about right now is the fact that he's activating. So the left ring has an activator and a deactivator. Let's do the same analysis now on the right-hand ring. Over here, he has this substituent right here, like this, connected. And remember, we already know he's a deactivator. And he also has this substituent right here, this aldehyde. If you remember, he's also a deactivator. So, simply put, the right ring has two deactivators, whereas the left ring has an activator and a deactivator. That makes the left ring more reactive, simply because, of course, an activator and a deactivator make a benzene ring more reactive than having two deactivators. 
So now we know the BR is going to be added to the left hand ring. What we have to figure out now is where on the left ring. Well now it becomes just a simple tri substitution problem. We'll look at the methyl first and notice that he happens to be an ortho para director, which means he'd like to add the BR either here or here, ortho to him. Whereas the other substituent is a meta directing deactivator. So he'd like to add the electrophile meta to him, which would be right here. So it's kind of like the agreement case. So that means we're done. We either add the BR here, which is one possible product, or we could add the BR over here, which is another possible product. However, though, in this particular case, these two end up being identical. Will that always be the case? No. That's why we should look at both of the possible ortho products here just in case.